Hello, and welcome to Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The way that you look at the world matters. The farther I get down this journey in life, the more I realize that it shapes a lot of how we think and what we do. The way you look at the world matters. There is, uh, the fancy term for it is general revelation, but we see God's glory revealed in creation. We see the goodness of God, the magnitude of God, the awesomeness of God portrayed in his creation. Psalm 19, one of my favorites. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows us his handiwork. You see, I did not grow up a Christian. Became a, what I would say, a real Christian. It's not for me to judge who who else is a Christian or acting like a Christian. But I'd say if you asked me before that, I'd been like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. But I mean like giving my life to God and living for God, making God the number one thing in my life. Serving God, following Jesus Christ. I'd say that was in my mid-20s. I grew up in the world. Not really in a Christian church-going family. Not with a Christian upbringing or background. And my education was mostly left to the quote-unquote education system, if you want to call it that. A more accurate way to describe it instead of public education might be cultural indoctrination. It's probably more accurate than public education. Indoctrinate you into the culture and their worldview. Very early on and very much so, they drench it in everything and they teach what is theory as if it were fact. And growing up, I really didn't know any other way. I assumed that, you know, they teach the Big Bang Theory. That must be true. It must be science. They call it science, but it's not science. Science is observable, experimentable, repeatable. The Big Bang Theory is none of those things. The Big Bang Theory is, in fact, a theory and not even a very good one. It's the best that they can come up with when they remove God from the equation. There was nothing, and then there was something created ex nihilo out of nothing that sounds like god to me you could think that that's science but that's not science it's not like one's actual fact and one's a religious theory they're both of religion one's just right and one is false in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth not some random happenstance laws of physics that nobody can explain right it's not science nobody can recreate a big bang Nobody, no human scientist can create something out of nothing. No human scientist can create a singularity. And don't even get me started on gravity. But it's not science. It's not provable. It's not repeatable as far as the Big Bang goes. You need to have faith in what they're teaching you that it's true because you can't prove it. It's not a provable thing, the Big Bang. Likewise... Evolution. What a horrible, disgusting worldview that is. Again, that is not science. It's a theory, and it's not a good one. It's not a very good one at all. It's not repeatable. It's not provable. It's not observable. I think a big reason that the scientists try and make the world so old is so you can't call them on their garbage religion. So, oh, you can't see one creature evolve into another. It takes eons and eons, an incomprehensible amount of time, millions and millions and millions of years. So you can't call them on their lack of actual proof. You could believe that or you could believe what the Bible says. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creature according to its kind, cattle, and creeping things, and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and every 
thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God said that he made everything out of nothing and he made the living things and he makes them according to their kind. Now, of course, animals reproduce and make new animals generation after generation. And those animals are slightly different than their parents. But that's not the kind of garbage evolutionary theory they're teaching. They're teaching that sometime after this big bang that they can't prove or demonstrate or create or recreate or or anything, that somehow life got started out of non-life, another thing that you can't reproduce, can't do in a lab, can't show it, can't experiment on it, how convenient, they want you to believe their religion that somehow life got started out of non-life and then this simple kind of life amoeba bacteria whatever long chain of amino acids that somehow started wiggling around on its own turned into a slightly more complex creature and a slightly more complex creature and then a multi-celled organism and then some kind of invertebrate and then one day that invertebrate decided that an exoskeleton, not so great. Let me have an internal skeleton and let me become a fish and let that fish walk up on land and start breathing air and all this garbage and you get to an ape and then you get to a human being. So somewhere down the line, you were a fish. Somewhere down the line, you were a bacteria. But, you know, it takes eons and eons of time. So Again, so you can't call them on their horrible, horrible religion because that's not science. It's by definition not science. You can't prove it. You can't repeat it. You can't show it. What do you see when you look, actually look and use your eyes and your reasoning that God gave you? Animals reproduce according to their kind. You can breed different kinds of dogs and get all kinds of different dogs, but they're always going to be a dog. You're never going to get a dog to produce a fish. You're never going to get fish and breed them and get them to reproduce a lizard. Or some other kind of amphibium. However they say that garbage evolutionary tree continues. You're never going to get an amphibian to turn into a mammal. You're never even going to get a cat to turn into a dog. You're never going to get a monkey to turn into a man. That's not science. That's garbage. It's a, it's a false religion. Animals reproduce according to their kind. I don't know how many times you breed a lab rat which breed very prodigiously and very quickly you can breed lab rats as long as you want you're never going to get them to turn into a rabbit you're never going to get one species to change into another species that's not how that works that's garbage religion garbage theology that's not science that's a garbage religion it's a false religion worldview matters and for a long time i just when i became a christian i became a christian and I gave my life to Christ, and I honestly, if I'm being honest and looking back circumspectly and judging myself righteously, I tried to avoid the topic and thinking about it, because that's what I had been told my whole life. Oh, evolution, the Big Bang, millions and trillions of years, and some... When I was a really little kid, I really liked dinosaurs as well. I really liked dinosaurs. I thought I wanted to be a paleontologist. I kind of, that was the worldview that I grew up in. Again, that they died out six back then they said 65 million years ago. I think now they think 66 million years. And when you're just making up millions and millions of years, who cares, right? But that's the worldview that I came from. And I, for a long time, I'll be honest, looking back, I just tried to avoid it and tried to then reconcile the two. They're, they're a completely different worldview. I'm not saying you can't be a Christian and believe those things. Because when I first became a Christian, I honestly tried to avoid a topic and tried to avoid thinking about it and and maybe try to reconcile the two for a while. But I think if you are honest and circumspect and consider what God says, you run into serious theological issues. And they're not really compatible. God made man in his own image according to his own likeness. God breathed breath into man and he became a living being. You're not a monkey. You are a special creation made in the image of God. There was a literal first man, Adam. Adam sinned and death entered into the world. We read in Genesis, God created these things and said it is very good. 
Now, if you believe in millions and billions of years before that, there was a lot of there would have had to have been a lot of death and destruction before that. If you believe in evolution, this thing killing that thing and survival of the fittest and the strongest, and this thing eventually becomes another thing. All this crazy stuff they teach scales became feathers and exoskeletons somehow became internal skeletons and single celled life became complex life and all this stuff and these creatures were killing each other combating each other fighting each other for survival that is a different worldview I think worldview matters if you believe and this is really has to do with a lot of things if you believe that a man is a just a highly developed ape and and I think a lot of people in today's society that aren't Christians do think that a human life is about equal value to an animal life that isn't so God says that's not so it is written how much more valuable are you than a sheep it is written, are you not much more value than many sparrows? You are unique in creation. And we're called to be good stewards of the environment as somebody that loves being in the outdoors and loves putting meat on the table with the abilities and skills and hands God's given me. I appreciate animal life and I don't take it for granted and I'm blessed to be able to put meat on the table literally. I don't take animal life lightly, but I don't put it at the same level as a human being. It's not on the same level. Human life is a different thing. We are made in the image of God, and there's a lot that goes into that, and that would bring us off the topic of the main idea of today's episode. But you were made in the image of God. You realize what a literal game changer that is. You realize what a literal life-changing thing that is to grasp that in all creation, which is beautiful and, and, and a spectacular thing, you realize that you were made special in the image of God, different than anything else in all creation. That right there, that, that paradigm shift, that epiphany, that you're not random chance in a, you know, highly developed ball of primordial soup that was once a bacteria and then a fish, that you are special, made in the image of God. That alone is a life-changing thing, can be a life-changing thing. You see why it matters. You see why the culture, the society, tries so hard to indoctrinate you into a false religion. It is our daily culture that permeates everything. They try and shove it in everything. They'll teach you that, you know, the universe is just a random thing. We're just on some random ball on a random star, some random corner of the universe. That's not what the Bible says. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. God intelligently, the most intelligent, the most intelligent being, period, God intelligently designed earth as the dwelling place for man while he is alive. In these earthly bodies. You're not on some random ball in space. It's not random. God designed it. And God placed you here for a purpose. Not random happenstance on a random planet. You see how that is a major paradigm shift. You see how worldview matters. You're not random. The fact that you're here is not random. It's by design. And that alone should change your worldview. Change your life. Bible says God knit us together in our mother's womb. God designed this earth for you and he designed you and he put you here in this time and this place. And an almighty perfect God doesn't make mistakes. You see what a different life you have if you believe that you're just here by random chance and nothing really matters versus you were placed here on purpose, by design, for this time, in this place, for a purpose. You see what a difference that makes? It's worldview matters. 
Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Who's in charge? Who's pulling the strings in this sinful culture? We see the most fundamental and basic of of worldview things. God made them male and female. You don't some things in life you don't get to decide. And some garbage what they would call science today or who knows what they would even call it. But they deny the fact that men and women are different. Right? Some things in life you don't get to pick. It wasn't a mistake. You were designed and put here for a purpose, remember? We talked about that. God doesn't make mistakes. He made you. He made us male and female. They are different. They are distinct. And you don't get to pick. The Like the most obvious of what should be actual science, the most obvious that men and women are different. They're different physically. They're different anatomically, right? This should not even be a debate. Tell me Satan is not behind destroying this. What's the first command given here? Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. What does Satan want to do? Stop us from listening to God. The first thing he tells us, Be fruitful and multiply. And what's happening today? Young men and women mutilating themselves, destroying their body so that they can't be fruitful and multiply, so they don't even know what they are. Living a lie, denying who they were created to be. The most basic of, of like human things, male and female, are being destroyed. The family unit being destroyed. The being fruitful and multiplied being destroyed. You think that's coincidence? No, that's Satan. He's at work in our culture and our society in this, what you would call public education system. I would say cultural indoctrination system. Worldview matters. It matters. You matter. God loves you. He made you for a purpose. He made you male or female. He created you for this earth, for this time, for a purpose. In his very own image. He put you here in this beautiful earth. Now we're warned in the word of God not to worship the creation which we see a lot of people doing today, environmentalism and whatnot. Taking care of the environment is a good thing. Worshiping the environment is idolatry. It's a bad thing. Worship the creator. Doesn't that make more sense? The one who created the plants and the animals and the seas and the earth and the firmament. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. You're not spinning on some random blue marble somewhere in the backwaters of space in an insignificant place, in an insignificant way. You were designed in an intelligently designed environment and placed for a purpose by a loving Powerful, intelligent God who loves you, who created you, and doesn't make mistakes. That matters. The very fact that God made you and made you in His image means that you matter. Your worldview matters. Don't be like me when I first became a Christian and avoid thinking about it. God gave you a brain and reason.
just believe what others tell you. What does God say? Search for the truth. Don't be like Pilate and say, oh, what is truth? No, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And I desire you to live a freer, better life. Christ died to set us free. With that, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.